Hi, welcome to our unit on energy. Energy and the use and processing of energy is incredibly important in living systems. We're going to begin this unit with a discussion of bioenergetic theory, or how living systems exist in a universe that has physical laws that govern how energy behaves. And I figured that the best way to make the point that energy is so important for living systems is to put up a picture like this and point out that death is the inevitable result of biological systems no longer being able to successfully use energy. The question that we're going to answer in this first video is why do living systems use energy? We're going to talk about the laws of thermodynamics and their consequences for biological systems. We're actually really only gonna talk about two of the laws of thermodynamics, and we'll start with the first one. You probably already know the first law of thermodynamics, but in case you need a refresher, here it is. Energy can't be created or destroyed only transformed. In the vast majority of cases on Earth, the energy input is the big yellow thing in the sky, which has been photographed here in blue, but it's the sun. In almost every case on the planet, the sun is the ultimate input of energy, and living systems can't create any additional energy and they can't destroy any. What they can do is transform that energy, the electromagnetic radiation that comes from the sun, into other forms that can then be used in other places in the biological system. The consequence of the first law of the thermodynamics for living systems is that you absolutely need to eat, or if you're a producer, to make your own food. If you don't go out and eat something else or produce your own food, you are not going to survive for very long. Energy input is crucial for life. We should pause here and talk about a very important misconception, which is that energy is never made or destroyed. It's only transformed. So if you say something like the cell produces energy, that suggests that you have a lack of understanding of biological energetics. It would be more appropriate to say something like cells convert energy into biologically useful forms. This isn't only true of cells, with the exception of a few edge cases in nuclear physics, it is a property of every system on the planet. For instance, this light bulb, it has two different states, it can be off or on, but it would be absolutely silly to say that the light bulb that is on is making energy. It isn't. It's just converting the energy that goes into it into another form, namely light radiation. The second law of thermodynamics is that every transfer of energy increases the entropy of the universe. The term entropy generally refers to disorder or randomness. Every time energy is transformed in the universe, the overall entropy of the universe increases. Generally speaking, in living systems, every time an energy transfer occurs, some amount of that energy is going to be lost in disordered, non-useful forms, generally as heat, which results from the random movement of molecules. The consequences of the second law for living systems are twofold. You need to eat and you will eventually die. You need to eat because every time energy transformations occur inside of you, the entropy of your system is increasing in some small amount. If you allow that to continue without consuming highly ordered forms of energy, like the types of molecules that we get when we eat food, eventually the entropy of your system will increase to the point where it can no longer function and you will die. But even if you continue to eat, eventually you're going to die anyway. There's no way to escape the inevitable increase of entropy in your system to the point that you are no longer ordered enough in order to remain alive. Certainly doing things like eating and taking care of yourself prolongs your gradual descent in to irrevocable entropy, but eventually it is going to happen. Which brings up another important misconception, which is that living systems do not necessarily have to increase in entropy on a continual basis. You don't, I don't, we generally do not. If you consider going from a single cell that was produced when you were fertilized to you sitting there right now watching this video, I'm sure that you can agree that your overall order has increased over time. The reason that this is possible is because living systems are able to decrease your, their local entropy in the system as long as they are increasing the entropy of their surroundings. And this is true for all living systems, including the plant that this cellular cross-section was taken from. Living systems can take the order from the molecules that are input into the system and use the energy in those molecules to increase their local order. As long as those processes ultimately result in an increase in the entropy of the universe, if you want to get a really good example of this, look at the food that you put into you and then consider the form of that food when it eventually exits your system. I think we can all hopefully agree that the food that you're putting into you is a much more ordered version of those molecules than the waste that it's turned into by the time it leaves your body. The reason that living systems can do this, can increase their order at the expense of the surroundings, is because they are open systems. 
Closed systems are shut off from the environment. There are no inputs, there are no outputs. Living systems are open systems. There are inputs, things like sun for producers and food for consumers like us. And there are outputs, things like heat and waste products. It's only because living systems are open systems that they can undergo increases in order over the time spans that they exist. Another major concept to understand on the theoretical basis is the notion of equilibrium. Equilibrium refers to a state in which the rate of forward reactions and processes is equal to the rate of reverse reactions and processes. Living systems do not exist at equilibrium. In order to continue to exist at a place where you're able to maintain your internal order, the rate of those forward processes that lead to that maintenance of order have to be greater than the rate of the reverse processes that would lead you into disorder. This is what we call homeostasis, which refers to a stable state that living systems can exist at that is away from equilibrium. Homeostasis is a non-equilibrium state. Eventually, all living systems will reach equilibrium with their environments, and that's, of course, when they die. Death is the only time that living systems will reach equilibrium with their environment. And on that cheery note, thanks so much for watching our introduction to bioenergetic theory. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can explain the laws of thermodynamics, Make sure that you can describe how living systems adhere to those laws. And finally, make sure you can explain how living systems get energy, use that energy to increase or at least maintain their order, maintain a state of homeostasis away from equilibrium, and generally avoid equilibrium until they can't anymore. If you can do all those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.